Bless. Amen. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Amen. Amen. God is good. I love that song. He is a good, good father. Amen. 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 He's a gracious father. Man, I love that. And, and we just welcome the presence of God in here today. Um, I, I just want to have a, a couple have a couple announcements that I want to make. Um, we have some um, some gifts for the mothers uh, here, and you know we just ask for a donation um, after service if you like, and you know we'll be giving that out after service, I believe, right? Right. The flowers are for Right to Life. Okay. Yep. It's a fundraiser for Right to Life for the mothers. Yep. Fundraiser for for Right to Life for the mothers. So you know, if you have a donation you can make, that would be appreciated. Um, and so we just, just want to celebrate mothers and, and I, I love Right to Life. They do a great job. Um, I was actually, you know, looking them up this week. So just, just a good time to, just a good time to donate and help out. Um, you know, we want to do that as much as we can, um, because we don't know how much time we have, do we? We don't know how many times like this we have left. You watch the news, watch what's going on in the world. Our time is very limited, amen? amen? So let's not take this for granted. Every time we get together to spend with one another, this is precious, amen? amen. And then one day, we're going to have the privilege to be with the Lord forever together. Amen. Isn't that something? Yep. Yep. Isn't that something my, my grandmother used to say, man, that's a good, good thing. <laughs> That we're going to be able to be together with the Lord one day. Um, we want to pray for, I just want to take a pause and say a prayer for our senior pastor, Pastor Curtis. Um, not feeling well today. You know, his arthritis has been acting up. Um, and, you know, and he wasn't able to get out of bed, you know, so I had a rough day yesterday. And I spoke with him and miss sue and, and so i want to i want to say a prayer for our pastor because my bible says um that if two or more agree it shall be done amen 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 and so we have more than two here don't we amen. so if we agree together god could touch pastor curtis right now and totally snatch that arthritis out of his body amen, amen. i've seen people healed of cancer I've seen people healed of diabetes. I've seen people healed of, of uh, asthma. You name it. God is in the healing business. He wants to heal people. All he is looking for is faith. Amen. 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 And I believe we got some faithful mothers here. Amen. Amen. I believe we got some prayer warriors here. Amen. Amen. That believe in the power of God. And so let me tell you something, that'll move mountains. Amen. So let's move a mountain right now for our senior pastor and believe that God will touch him right now where he is. And next Sunday, there will be no evidence of arthritis. Amen. Amen. We have the power given to us by the Holy Spirit to speak these things into existence. Yes. Yes. So let's all stand together in prayer for our senior pastor. Thank you. And as we bow our heads, Father God, we just come to you, Lord, as humbly as we can, God. And Father God, I pray that you would stretch your mighty hand and touch Pastor Curtis right yes. now, God. Yes. Father God, we know that this is in your will, God. Yes. Every affliction that has come against that body, I call it out right now yes. in the yes. name of Jesus. Yes. I plead the blood of Jesus over his body yes. and call it to rise up. Yes. I call that body to behave in the way that the Lord God has commanded it yes. to. Yes. There is yes. a calling on this church yes. and there is a calling in our pastor and there is a fire in our pastor, God. Yes. And Father God, I call that body to align with the spirit yes. as it's supposed to and act right in the name of Jesus yes. I speak against any hand of Satan right now yes. I speak against any hand of the enemy right now yes. I call it under dominion in the name of Lord Jesus Christ yes, yes. I call healing into that body right now yes. and as a corporate 
family, we agree that it is done in the name of Jesus yes. right now. Yes. Yes. I loose every yes. hand of Satan, every hand of bondage that has come against our pastor right yes. now. Yes. I loose every ill-mannered word that has been spoken against yes. him right yes. now. Yes. Devil, you must stand back. You cannot touch the children of God. How dare you come against the house of the Lord? Yes. Amen. In Jesus' name, we agree. Yes. Our pastor is healed of this arthritis. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You may be seated. It is done. We have to start coming against these things, church. Yes. We have to start. My wife told me about how in the daycare they have some people that they don't want to be called the he or the she or they want to be called the them and the they. I don't know much about that stuff, but I know it's not of God. I know it's not of God. I know that it's a form that the enemy has taken to discredit motherhood and fatherhood because they don't want you to say happy Mother's Day and all this mess. And that's just a, a, a work of the enemy. And we can't stand idly by. These things happen because the church is not being the church. If the church stands up, the enemy cannot have a foothold at all in our world. Yes. Amen? Amen. When you see your family members sick, start to speak over them. Speak healing in them. You have the power given to you by the Holy Spirit to do that. Amen. Jesus. Sorry, I just... No. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to, we're going to be in 1 Samuel chapter 1. And I want to give back because I appreciate mothers. You mothers do such an amazing job. And I believe that one of the, probably the greatest, we should, there should be ceremonies for mothers and how good that of a job they do. Uh, my mom is a great mom. You know, I always say every dumb choice I ever made was because of me. Yeah. It wasn't because I didn't have a good mom. It wasn't because I didn't have a good father. God blessed me with a good mother and a great father. And and I just thank God. And and I, I want you today, as we celebrate mothers and whether your mom is here or not, we're going to celebrate them. Amen? Amen. We're going to celebrate them. Um, in 1908, let me pray first. I just, Father God, I just ask, Lord God, every word spoken be you and not me, God. I surrender under your will, Lord God, this word. And I, Father, I pray that we all would leave here changed, different than how we came in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 1908, Miss Ann Jarvis of Philadelphia observed the first Mother's Day on her own, waiting to celebrate the memory of her mother. And believing that other people would like to share her feelings, she began to lobby across the nation, rally a na nationwide campaign to get the whole country to be alert to the need for Mother's Day. And finally, six years later, Congress affirmed that by signing, the, by the president signing in tradition, the heritage of Mother's Day. And now it's upheld nationwide and even uh, worldwide. Mother's Day is. Um, and I just want to say again, thank you, mothers. Yes, thank thank you, you for all that you do. Thank you for being patient <laughs> with us men sometimes. I know it takes a lot of patience. Um, thank you for being diligent and most thank you for being faithful. Amen. Thank you for being faithful. Let me tell you something. When I saw that the women of this church were meeting together, I was so happy and so much joy came to me because let me tell you, revivals, some of the greatest revivals were started with praying women that were faithful. And you don't hear about that a lot. You, you hear about the Zusa Street revivals and stuff like that, but you don't hear about the women that would meet up in their houses to pray and that were praying diligently for a revival. And I believe if our mothers would get together, as they are in this church, and, and, and around other churches would get together and start to pray and believe God for revival. See, these, these mothers back then, they didn't wait for the men. They didn't wait for their husbands to get in line with the calling of God. They got together and made a call and shook heaven. 
And God had to answer. And he answered in a mighty way. I want, um, I'm going to have my wife come real quick. And she has something she's going to read uh, for the mothers. And then I'll get into the message. But I think it's really nice and just a really nice tribute to all moms. Um, you ready, honey? If you guys don't mind, she's just going to read this. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello. <laughs> I'm just going to read this passage for all the moms. And again, um, thank you to all the moms. You guys are powerful women of God, and you do set the tone. You set the tone for your children and, you know, raising them to be godly women and men of, you know, of God, of Christ. Um, the young mother set her foot on the path of life. Is this the way, is the way long, she asked. And her guide said, yes, and the way is hard, and you will be old before you reach the end of it, but the end will be better than the beginning. But the young mother was happy, and she would not believe that anything could be better than these years. So she played with her children and gathered flowers for them along the way and bathed with them in the clear streams. And the sun shone on them, and life was good. And the young mother cried, nothing will ever be lovelier than this. And then night came, and storm, and the path was dark, and the children shook with fear and cold, and the mother drew them close and covered them with her mantle. And the children said, O oh, mother, we're not afraid, for you are near and no harm can come. And the mother said, This is better than the brightness of day, for I have taught my children courage. And the morning came, and there was a hill ahead, and the children climbed and grew weary, and the mother was weary. But at all times she said to the children, A little patience, and we'll be there. So the children climbed, and when they reached the top, they said, We could have not done it without you, mother. And the mother, when she lay down the night, looked up at the stars and said, This is a better day than the last, for my children have learned strength in the face of hardness. Yesterday I gave them courage, today I've given them strength. And the next day came strange clouds which darkened the earth, clouds of war and hate and evil. And the children groped and stumbled, and the mother said, Look up, lift your eyes to the light. And the children looked and saw above the clouds an everlasting glory, and it guided them and brought them beyond the darkness. And that night, Mother talked to Jesus and said, This is the best day of all, for I have shown my children God. And the days went on, and the weeks, and the months, and the years. And the mother grew old, and she was little and bent. But the children were tall and strong and walked with faith and courage. And when the way was rough, they lifted her, for she was as light as a feather. And at last they came to a hill. And beyond the hill, they could see a shining road and golden gates flung wide. And the mother said, I've reached the end of my journey. And now I know that the end is better than the beginning. For my children can walk alone, for they walk with God. And the children said, you will always walk with us, mother, even when you're gone through the gates to the Savior. And they stood and watched her as she went on alone, and the gates closed behind her. And they said, we cannot see her, but she is still with us. A mother like ours is more than a memory. She is a living presence. That's for all of the mothers today. Thank you. Thank you. That's, a, that's a story from the 1800s I found, and it's not a, don't know who the author, author was, but it's, boy, there's a strong contrast from how we see our mothers today to how they saw their mothers back then. Mm. Amen. Amen. There's something we have to learn. Um, that was written actually by a young man. And I love that story because it, it's so beautiful. And it explains a godly mother. See, it's just because you have a child doesn't make you a godly mother. I tell the youth that all the time because I see a lot of young men and a lot of young women that are missing moms and missing dads. And it's nothing worse than having a present mom or a present father that isn't present. You understand what I'm saying? They're in the house, but they're not there. To have a godly mother is a blessing. And I love that story because no matter what the kids went through, mom was there. And she was literally a li living image of Jesus Christ to her kids. And at the end of their life, the kids still followed Jesus. That's the picture God wants us to get today. He doesn't want our mothers to be mothers to think that the only way out is aborting your child. 
Because you have to understand that child is a blessing by God. It's a blessing by God. The Bible says in Samuel that we're about to read that God allows a woman's womb to be open to birth a, ch a child. Do you know that some women can't have kids? Some women long to have a child. Because see, back in these days, it was a blessing to have children. They looked at it as a high honor to be called mother. And see, I know I'm, I have a lot of moms. Amen. I got a lot of spirit. I have a physical mother who's always been there. But then I got spiritual moms. You know, I got Miss Sue and I got moms all over the place. OK, <laughs> spiritual moms are so important. Amen? Amen. Because they help you and lead you just like your personal mom. And I love the way God ha has done this. And we have to look at motherhood differently. I remember when my wife was having our child, I started to look at motherhood differently. After she went through those three days in the hospital and, and uh, what was it, 16 hours of labor... You know, and, and I was there for it all. Um, and I, it made me have more of an appreciation for women and mothers. And I want to say that God honors motherhood. And it's not to be taken lightly. Caldwell said that no nation is greater than its mothers, for they are the makers of men. Paul wrote in Timothy, and he said to Timothy, women will be saved in childbearing. 1 Timothy 2.15 says, says that women will be saved in childbearing. And what did he mean? He meant that this is a virtuous role that God has given mothers to be able to bear children. Motherhood today is nothing more than an investment in business. And it means you have to look we have to start to look at ourselves and examine ourselves to make this change because it must change. If what, if what Caldwell says that motherhood determines the strength of our nation, the strength of our leaders, because who knows your child could be the next leader. Your child might be the next pastor. It might be the next Timothy, it might be the next Paul that you're raising. Let me tell you something else. Motherhood doesn't stop at 18. Like, like, like the society would like you to think. Motherhood does not stop at when your child turns 18. That's not when it stops. My mom teach, teaches me lessons to this day. I mean, the other day she... You know, I was getting on her nerves. I get on her nerves a lot, okay? <laughs> and you know what she said? She said, David, you're going to get your last whooping. And I said, I said, Mom, at 30? 31? You're going to give me my last whooping? Oh, boy. <laughs> but that's the type of mom she is, amen? She wants me to continue to learn. And I think until the day God calls her home, she's going to be like that. And that's what God wants. He, he has a standard that was set. Paul said to Titus are, that mothers are the teachers of the younger women to be lovers of their husbands, to be lovers of their children, chastened, pure, keepers in the home, a widow to be put in the list accordingly. So what I believe Paul is saying there to Titus is that the, all the roles a mother has. And they have a lot of roles, amen? amen. Mothers have a lot of roles to keep. And, and I remember just, just this week I saw my wife. I mean, as she we come home and then she wrestles with our daughter to, to get her to take a nap. And, and sometimes my daughter don't want to take a nap. So she'll kick and scream and, you know, she'll throw her diaper off and throw her clothes <laughs> off and, and stuff. And, and, you know, and, and, some, and I remember, I think this was Wednesday, and I was really caught into the TV because, 
you know, the Green Bay Packers were doing something and they were making a, a interesting move that it looked like on ESPN. And my wife called out to me, honey, Naomi is wrestling with me. I need some help. And so I said, yeah, honey, I'm, I'm going to be there. You know, I'm just trying to see what Green Bay is, is doing here. And, you know, and, and I, in, the, in the other room, it sounded like World War II was going on. You know, I mean, she, yeah, I heard shoes bouncing off the wall. And, and, and my wife said, don't kick me. And, don't, you know, and so I finally went in there. And, and yeah, it looked like World War II had happened. <laughs> you know, but... My wife had looked at me and she said, honey, you got to do better. <laughs> you got to do better. You got to come in here a lot sooner. And, and she was just explaining to me because she had been at work and she, you know, deals with kids at work. And, and then she picks our daughter up, brings her home and deals with her. And, and, you know, God spoke to me as she was speaking to me and said, David, he said, your wife is surrounded. So she needs a break. And so I said, honey, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take care of Naomi. And, you know, and I let her go get her nails done. I said, go get your nails done and your toes done. And I'm going to take care of her so you can just have some you time. Because God showed me she was tired. That's why there was such a fight. See, God will speak to us, man. But we got to be listening to his voice. Sometimes we're so loud and we have so much to say as men that we don't give God time to put his effort in and to put in what he has to say. So for a moment, I was tired. And the only thing God had to say with me was that she was tired. She needed a break. So I gave her a break. Let her go get her nails done and things like that. And I wrestled with Naomi. And boy, did I wrestle with her. <laughs> You know, she's been teething, getting her last, I forget what they call, molars. And man, it's a fight, brother. <laughs> it's been a fight. Um, but, but God is good. Amen. So we have to do, we have to change how we see motherhood. There's many examples of godly women in the Bible. There's Sarah, Abraham's wife. I call her the woman of faith. Amen. There's uh, Rachel, whose last words before she... Her life had passed from her body, were at the giving of birth to one of her children, whom she named Behem, a child of grief. Ruth, the gentle, sweet spirit who loved and sacrificed and was blessed to be the mother of Odin, who bore Jesse, who bore David, who, who was the seed of the Messiah. That was Ruth. And see, I love this because if Ruth hadn't been who Ruth was, if Ruth hadn't been the woman that God had called her, called her to be, there, had, there would have had to have been a change of plans. The Messiah wouldn't have been able to go through that bloodline if Ruth wasn't the woman of God that God had called her to be. Let me tell you something, mothers. I know there are hard days and there's days where you're thinking, man, these kids just aren't living right. And grandmothers where you can see, I, I, I can see it in my wife too. You can see the potential in your children. You know what God spoke to you on that day when they were born, when the purposes they had. You know that. They might not know that. I didn't know that. My mom used to speak it over me every day and my grandmother. See, I had godly woman around me all the time, but I wasn't walking in the calling that God had for me. But my mom would say it all the time. David, you're called by God. David, you're anointed by God. I said, yeah, mom, that's what you always say, you know. But every time I get in trouble in school, God, David, you're a child of God. You're anointed by God. You got to start living in that. Oh, yeah, mom, you know, it's not that big of a deal. You know, that's what I would say. But she knew the calling that was on my life because she was my mother. She had spent time in prayer, time in praying in the spirit, time in, in hoping that God would catch my heart and get a grip of reality like she had. And mothers, I know that's you. I know we have some mothers in here and you know the dreams that God has for your children's life. And maybe it hasn't come to, to pass yet. But I'm here as a witness saying God will have it to happen. We got some roots in here. I believe that. 
And I believe that one day your children will give thanks to you. Just like the children in that story that said, thank you, mom. We couldn't make it to the mountaintop without you. We couldn't have made it to where God wanted us to be without you. See, women, the church wouldn't be what it is today without you. Amen. Mothers, the church wouldn't be where it is today without your prayers. Your prayers is keeping the hand of God moving in our sanctuaries. Amen? Amen. So in 1 Samuel, we meet this lady, and this is one of my favorite women in the Bible. Her name's Hannah. And I love because her, her name means beauty. Um, and it means grace. And indeed, she is the embodiment of these words. She represents womanhood. She first appears as a child, a childless woman. Then she becomes a mother, the mother of one of the greatest men to ever walk this earth. As the book opens, it's kind of giving you some, you know, some back backtracking on what's going on in the book of 1 Samuel. Um, it's a period of judges. So there's no king in Israel yet. It was a bad time in Israel. It's a time of confusion. Israel had left God. It was kind of, you know, just kind of cold against God. Samson had died. You know, they didn't really have a good leader. Remind you of something? Remind you of today, right? Mm -hmm. A country that had left God, forgotten about God, confusion everywhere, and they needed a godly leader to be ro rose up. So God chose Hannah. And what I like about Hannah is she's not a lady that wanted to be in the forefront, wanted to be noticed at all. She was just faithful. She was a faithful woman. I love this. <clears throat> Worst of all, in chapter 3, verse 1, it says the word of the Lord was rare in those days and visions were infrequent. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. God didn't, didn't even have, any, have anything to say. So these were bad times. These were times where a nation needed a leader to stand up. And so God chooses this woman to birth a child, a man that would change everything. Verse 1 starts out, the first Samuel. It says, now there was a certain man... From um, I'm gonna try my best to pronounce some of these words, <laughs> but um, what Rahamadism, from the hill country of Emerism, that is around the Mount of Emerism, and his name was Achiah, the son of Jaham, the son of Aliyah, the son of Tua, the son of Jehif, the son the son of the Ephraimite. And he had two wives. The name of one wife was Hannah, and the name of the other was Paniah. And Paniah had children, but Hannah had no children. And he was married to two women, Paniah and Hannah. Boy, isn't that something? <laughs> to be a godly mother, you have to have the right husband relationship. She had the right husband relationship. Heavy, heavenly relationship, and she had the right home relationship. See, I said at the beginning, just because you have a child doesn't make you a godly mother. I believe these are the three things you have to have. The right husband relationship, heaven relationship, and home relationship. Amen. You got all these aspects, then what you're going to be is a godly mother. And you're going to see fruits of your labor. The most important relationship in a family is raising godly children. It is not the relationship between the parents and the children. It's, re it's the relationship between the mother and the father. I see this all the time in churches now. And when I, as a youth pastor, you see broken homes a lot. I think most, a lot of our young people that come, come from broken homes. Come from homes with a single mom. Or, you know, or a dad that has never been there before. Mom's holding down the whole house. And then we got youth that come that 
don't have a mom or a dad, being raised by grandmother and grandpa. This is not the way that God intended it to be. It's not the way God intended it to be. Kids learn how to love by you mothers, by you fathers. So we have to be diligent in the way we love each other. Me and my wife talk about this all the time. Even though my child's only two, I can tell she's picking up on things. She picks up on how I treat my wife. Because she treats her the same way. Yep. She, treat, she, she says she says it all the time, love you, mama, dada. Mm -hmm. And she'll repeat it all the time. Mm -hmm. It's because she hears me saying that to my wife. She hears me saying that before I go to work, mm -hmm. when I come back home and things like that. So she's picking up. So it, it's been, she, she learns from our honesty, our virtue. Yep. She learns from all that. So when you see all these things in the world, these kids acting up and causing in this violence, they learned this from somewhere. But people say, they, I came out the womb like this. No, you didn't. You learned your behavior from somewhere. It stems all the way back to the home. You got kids that were abused, that were beaten, and things like that. So what do they do when they grow up? They abuse and beat. They abuse and beat on their friends. They abuse and beat on their wives. They abuse and beat on their husbands. So you have everything out of order. But God has a standard. And Hannah, oh, I love this. Hannah and Ekakiah relationship wasn't perfect. And yours won't be either. That's the first thing you got to understand. And I'm talking to you, mother. Is that your relationship won't wasn't won't be perfect. You're gonna have obstacles. And Hannah and this this man, see, this man had two wives, which was the thing back then. You know, you, you they would have multiple wives. It was not in God's plan, but he allowed it. It was never in God's plan. And if you ever look at missionaries that go out to other countries, and what they what you will see is one thing that a missionary, one of the hardest things for them to break is a mindset that you can have multiple wives. And it takes years sometimes for them to break this mindset. They, they have to work years to show these people, no, that's not the way God wants it to be. You have to have one wife and you have to be committed to that one wife. So it took years for Israel to break this when they found out this wasn't God's plan. So this man having two wives, I can't imagine what he was going through. But he loved Hannah. He loved her. That was his true love. So Hannah was married and it's called a polygamist. Two wives in one house. No thank you. Um, <laughs> we don't know the details, but it may well have been that he married uh, Paniah because Hannah was barrenless. And in order to produce a generation who could then possess his inheritance, and so that would even make the pain deeper because Panana came into the picture and he, she had some type of union with this man. And the Bible even says that she used to attack, she would attack Hannah and say, well, you can't bear children. You know how women are. You get two women in one kitchen, that's not good. My mom used to say it all the time. <laughs> okay? But but she would attack her and, and, and the Bible says she would she would make fun of her. You can't have a child. So I'm the better wife. I'm the better woman. I'm the better this. I'm the better that because you can't have and see things are different today. You don't, I'm hoping you don't have two women in your house. If you do, we got to have a conversation. Okay, but, but women still attack other women. And see, God never had that to be like that. Women, you're supposed to build each other up. Amen, Amen? because motherhood is hard. Amen. So you got to find, there has to be some place where you get gas back up. Okay, so enough is enough. When you come to church, Women should be building other women up. Likewise, men, we should be building each other up. Why? Because I don't know what you went through out there. I say this to the youth all the time. I don't know what you went through on your job. 
I don't know what you went through, you know, why you were just going about your daily life. Maybe you stumbled in here and your spirit is low and heavy because you've been fighting the devil, fighting demonic attack. I don't know. But I want to be sensitive to that. We can't be so insensitive to not care about what others are going through. We're a family. I love you. And you love me, I hope. <laughs> Amen? Amen? So we got to care about each other. We can't be like Panaya was to Hannah. Just tearing her down. Tearing her down. Just trying to tear her. I never understood that. Why did she want to tear this woman down so much? Maybe it was because of this. Maybe it was because of this. In Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 16, it explains how the high priest would go and give offering. And every man in the city would give offering. But this man, Elkakiah, verse 3 says, would go up to the city yearly to give worship and sacrifice to the Lord of hosts. And it, it, it doesn't really explain the prescription, but what he would do is he would give a portion. They would have, you know, they would have a feast and he would give a portion to each of his wives. But you know what he would do to Hannah? He would give her a double portion. So I think that Paniah would see that and she would get jealous. I think she would see, oh, my husband is giving his other wife a double portion. She would see the love that they shared. And I think she started to get all of that in her head and jealousy just came out. Mm -hmm. And jealousy will ruin a marriage. Yeah. Jealousy will totally ruin a marriage. There's been friends that I had that were men and friends that my wife have had that we had to say bye-bye to because there was jealousy there. There was jealousy, and I don't want anything to potentially come against our marriage. You have to hide your marriage today and keep it secure. Amen? Amen. But see, I love this husband because he was, so, he was so interested in his wife's feelings. He could tell she was hurt, and she was down because she wasn't able to have a child. So you know what? Everything he did was to make sure she was encouraged. So he would give her a double portion. And then he would say things to her. Notice in verse 4, when the day came and Echariah had sacrificed, one of those times he took the trip to Shaholom, he would give a portion to Paniah, just one portion, to his wife and all her sons and her daughters. But to Hannah, he would give double portion. For he loved Hannah. The Bible didn't say, that he had true love for Paniah. I believe Paniah was there just to bear children. <clears throat> but see, Hannah was his love. I love that. Men, if you don't know it yet, you ought to know it. A woman's security is in your love for her. Not in your bank account. A godly woman's security is in the way that you love her. Amen. You get that? What I like to do for my wife, and I'm not trying to boast or anything, but I love my wife. I believe that God graced me with her. And I told the pastor, Pastor Rick married her, married me and her. And, and I told him when we were going through marital counseling, I said, Pastor Rick, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know what I did to deserve her. All my life, I've done nothing but there was times I disrespected women, di disrespected my mom did all this stuff, and, and I said, in, in not looking at women the way that I should, calling them out of their names, I said, I don't deserve her. I said, but for some reason, God chose me to be her husband. And Pastor Rick said, David, that's the salvation message. That's what he said to me. He said, God gives us things we don't deserve. He said, now love her like you don't deserve her. Love her like you don't deserve her. Love you, love her every day, showing it in your works. And so that's what I try to do. I like to send her messages when she's at work just to encourage her, scriptures and stuff. Um, but you have to show your wife love, your mother, especially if she's a mom, because it's hard today. Mother, motherhood is attacked everywhere. It's attacked in schools. It's attacked in colleges. 
It's attacked everywhere. <clears throat> You're pushed to abort your baby. You're pushed to, to end the child's life. I don't understand it, but that's where we are as our society. And thirdly, they shared feelings. Verse 6 says, he revived, however, well, I want to, I want to read this part. He would provoke her bitterness to irritate her because the Lord had closed her womb. So it's speaking of Hannah that she would, or speaking of Paniah that she would provoke Hannah because the Lord had closed her womb. So Ekakiah sympathizing with that would come to Hannah, give her a double portion and encourage her with words. Encourage her with nice words. It talks about in 1 Samuel. You can read it there in chapter 1. I won't go through all of it. But he would encourage her. He would make her feel good about herself. Because for a woman back then to not have a child was huge. And the Bible says that she would weep bitterly. Hannah would. So it goes on to the big point. Um, I'm going to skip down here. He took time for his lady. When I, as I was preparing this last night, I was convicted because I don't know how you can't be as a husband. To hear of how this man loved this woman, how he would take time to see her feelings. The Bible says he would see her crying and then give her the double portion. That's how God is. God will see you as a mother struggling, going through hard times, and give you a double portion of blessing. Amen? Amen. Just because what does the Bible say? God won't allow you to go through what, he will only allow you to go through what you can handle. Amen? Amen? Amen. And see, we got a lot of mothers today in churches that have reached that point where they can't handle anymore. OK, and I don't believe it's being taught correctly. But see, Hannah was a woman of prayer, too. We're going to cover that in a minute. So she went to God and she started to pray to God. The Bible says she would go into the temple to give sacrifice. And see, you didn't do this as a woman, but she would go in to, to send up prayers to God. She would go to God weeping, broken. And man, I'm telling you this, when she walked out of that temple, she walked out a strong woman of God. Amen. Because her God gave her the strength. Mothers, you got to stop looking for the strength from everywhere else and realize your strength comes from the Lord. Amen. 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 <laughs> That's where your strength is found. So if you're weary, if you're broken, and all of this is going on, mothers, you go to that roar room. You ever seen that movie War Room? Let me tell you something about that mother, about that grandmother that had that little war room. Okay? It wasn't a pretty room. Amen. But there was war going on in that room. You got to have a war room in your house. Amen. A room where you come against the valley of darkness and you rage war. You wage a war that can't be seen with the eyes, with the physical eyes, but with the spiritual eyes it's going on. Let me tell you something. My mom waged war when I was a child. There were times where I would be sleeping and I would hear a room just speaking in tongues, going throughout the house. And my grandmother would do it too, just anointing the rooms. And then sometimes she'd go in my room and put her hands on my head and wake me up at 2 o'clock in the morning, praying in tongues over me. It's because she believed God had called her to do this. She believed that when there was an attack, she had to stand up and wage war. See, we lived in an apartment. We didn't have much room. So she made the whole house her war room. She made the whole house her war room. She went in the bathroom, anointed the bathroom. She went in the kitchen and started anoint anointing the kitchen. She went in the bedrooms when me and my brother would be fighting. And she would start anointing us. Because she didn't want any hand of darkness to start to take form in her house. It might happen at the neighbor's house. It ain't happening at my mom's house. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. So she took a stand. She took a stand. And mothers today, what God is calling you to do is take a stand. You got the spirit of God in you. 
And man, them children may not listen to you when you're talking to them in the face. You start to get in that war room and see if they don't listen. Yeah. I didn't have a choice but to listen. I remember one time my mom said she was praying in her war room, amen, in our house. And I was in school trying to do what I do, trying to talk to the honeys and, and stuff like that. And this one girl I was trying to talk to, she looked at me and she said, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I can't talk to you anymore. And I can't explain why. It's just a feeling that came over me. See, I had blocked myself to hearing the voice of God because I wanted my own way. But so God said, since you blocked me, and since I got a faithful woman praying back here, I'm going to cause this lady right here not to even want to be with you. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what happened. She didn't even understand why she didn't want to talk to me in high school. She just said, I can't talk to you no more. It's just a feeling that came over me at this moment. And I knew exactly what it was. <laughs> I knew exactly. I, said, I went home and I remember dropping my book ba bag on the floor. And I said, Mom, you did it again, didn't you? I said, you did it again, didn't you? You was praying against what I wanted, didn't you? And she said, David, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> she said, are you still talking to that girl? I was like, what girl? She said, the girl you don't got no business talking to. <laughs> I said, no, because she told me. That for some reason she can't talk to me no more. <laughs> and I said, and I think it was you that did that. She said, no, it had nothing to do with me. It was God. <laughs> That's what she said to me. Oh, but it's amen. because she knew mm -hmm. that that girl had nothing good for me. Amen. And so since I was blocking all ways for God to communicate, God went another way. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. God just stopped it right there. So mothers, let me tell you something. Your prayers are being heard in the heavenlies. Amen. 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 It affected me everywhere I was. When I went to college, trying to do my dirt there, I couldn't because God kept blocking me. Because he said, I got a praying woman back here. Matter of fact, I got a host of them. Because at that time, I was going to church, trying to do my dirt on the side. And so God said, I got a host of women praying, David. I got to intervene. But they were faithful. They were praying in faith. And they knew if I had went down that road, I would have never been called to be a pastor. Might not be standing in front of you. But it started because of a praying mother. Amen? Amen. Amen. Verse 9. I want to say this. A, a truly godly mother is not a reluctant mother. Not a mother, mother who finds a child as... as um, annoyance or, or a child is, oh, it's stopping my dreams. We're so infatuated with ourselves today. Mm -hmm. But see, back then, it wasn't about self. It was all about everybody else. Mm -hmm. It was all about everybody else. And what I love about Hannah in this, this, this passage, we learn about her. It says that, verse 9, I just want to read. I'm going to just read it. Hannah rose after eating and drinking in Sh uh, Shiloh. So where she got her different, her, her second portion. So God provided her with a second portion to encourage her. She rose. This is what she did. She had perhaps eaten a little bit under the encourage, en encourage. She had sunk in un under encouragement. But her husband had encouraged her. Verse 8 says, she now had has completed that in Shalom, Eli the priest was sitting on the seat by the doorpost of the temple of the Lord. The high priest is the temple. She goes there. She came into the temple greatly distressed. Her soul was bitter. It literally says, and she prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. She is just, she's just crushed and crushed. And, and then it says, oh Lord, and she goes on to make her vow. But notice this about this godly woman. She was a woman of prayer. And it's beautiful that when she was at her lowest, she knew where to go. When she was at her lowest, she knew where to go. She went to the temple of God. She went bitter. She went depressed. She went crying. She went weeping. But she knew where to go. And see, a lot of times, mother, and, and I know my mom used to do this. She'd get down. She'd get depressed. 
because of the wages of, of life coming against her. And I would see it. And she wouldn't make it to church. And you got more depression that would fall. More sadness that would fall. And I would see her sometimes just break out in tears. And I'd say, Mom, what's wrong? What's going on, Mom? And she, she'd say, David, she just wouldn't understand. But I knew that it was just life. It was just life. It was her seeing her younger kids not living the life of God. And see, I didn't understand it then. She said, one day you will. I understand it now. But when a mom sees their children not living for God, it's one of the most painful things in the world because they want everything for their child to live for God. Because just like in that story, they want to know that when they leave this earth, that kid's going to be okay. And the only way to assure that it's to know that child's with God. Because we know, don't we, saints, that if the child is with God, God's going to take care of everything. Mm -hmm. They may have times where the bills ain't paid. God's going to take care of the bills. Mm -hmm. You've seen it, haven't you? Yep. Had times in your life where you were sick and God took mm -hmm. care of you. Mm -hmm. Had times in your life where you didn't know a way out. God created the way out. Had times in your life where we had times where my mom didn't know where we was going to live. We just was riding in the car and she was praying and got a call from a friend saying, bring your kids here so y'all got some place to stay. Moments away from being homeless. But God made a way because of a praying woman. And that's what we need in our society. We need our mothers to stand up. Why? Because you're the backbone of the church. You're the backbone of revivals happening. Mmm. I love this. So lastly, I want to show you something. I want to show you the outcome that Hannah had. Chapter 2, verse 1 through 10. So she's not only a woman of passion, of prayer, of promise, of purity, a woman of faith. She also was a woman, and I love this, of praise. Mm. When God gave her the child that she had longed for, what was her response? Hannah prayed and said in verse 1, My heart exalts the Lord. My, my horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth speaks boldly against my enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. There is no one holy like the Lord. Indeed, there is no one beside thee, nor is there any rock like God. And she goes on and on through verse 10. You can read it. I don't have time, but she just continuously exalts the Lord. Let me tell you something. Mm. I remember when me and my wife was trying to have a child and, and she was worried because she had had people in her, her family that couldn't have kids. And then I knew it took my mom years to have me. But let me tell you something. My wife told me one day when she was alone, she prayed to the Lord and she prayed that God would give her a child. And she said to God, if you give me a child, I'm going to give it right back to you. If you give me a child, I'm going to give it right back to you. So guess what? Two weeks later, she was pregnant. Two weeks later, she was pregnant. It's because God was waiting for that mindset to line up with his will. He said, if I give you this blessing, I got to know you're going to use it right. I got to know you're going to bring this daughter right back to me so I can make another Hannah or another youth or Ruth or another Mary. I got to know that. So God gave us a child. Thank you, Father. So Hannah starts to rejoice. So I love this. She has all the attributes. She wanted to make sure her house was in order. So hit her, her and her husband. And see, the point that you don't want to miss is that her husband will go and give worship to God. You got to have a house full of worship to have a, be a successful mother. So you got to pick a man that will worship with you. You got to pick a husband that's going to worship God with you. Even in the trials, in the tests, you guys get up and start to worship God together and see if they don't start moving. You got to have someone that's going to worship with you. So they worship together in their sacrifice. And then she was a praying woman that went to the temple on behalf 
of her and her husband. And God answered those prayers. And man, did he answer in a mighty way. Gave her a son, the greatest man, one of the greatest men to ever walk this earth. And I love that. And it all started with Hannah. And let me tell you something. I believe back in those days, maybe Hannah wasn't really known. Maybe she wasn't known. Maybe most people back then probably didn't know Hannah's story. And mothers, I know it's the same with you. They may not know your story. They may not know everything you've been through to raise that child. All the tests and the trials you've been through. But let me tell you something. God knows. And he's been keeping a record. He was keeping a record of the time you went to him in that secret place and just started crying out for your children, speaking them in the name, speaking it to, into existence. Let me tell you something. I believe there's some young men here because of praying mothers. I believe there's some young men here right now because of a praying mom. And young men, I want you to understand, don't take that for granted. Your story might not be like mine. Your story might be different. Maybe your story is you had a praying mother, but you never listened to her. So God cut the cord, said enough is enough. <coughs> so you got today, make a choice. I don't know how long you're going to have. Like I said last time, church, I'm just the mailman. I go to God, I grab the mail and I give it to you. That's all I do, okay? I pray to him, I get the mail, and I bring it to you. So I can't tell you what God's plan is as far as when he's going to come back. The Bible says no man knows. I tell the youth this all the time. I don't know how long you have. I had a young man that was in my youth group. He overdosed on drugs. This is nine years ago, and he died. And I had to go to his funeral. And I remember looking into that casket. And thanking God, what could I have done more? You know, that's the pastor's heart. What could I have done more to save this young man? And I looked back at his mom, and she was just in tears. I mean, just hysterically crying. He was 15. He was 15. He was 15. And I remember looking back at her, and I just asked God, what, I, what could I have done more for this young man? Because he was in eternity. And they asked me to speak. And that's the worst position for a pastor. Is to speak at a funeral where you know the person isn't in heaven. And you say, well, pastor, you can't say that. Yes, I can say that. The book says, the Bible says, you can tell a tree by the fruit it bears. And that fruit on that young man's life was bad. So he entered into eternity with bad fruit. It's not good. So I can only tell you what the Bible says. He's not in a good place. <coughs> so when I got up to speak, I didn't have anything to say about the young man in the casket. His journey was done. It was all for the people that were there. And what I said is, we can't change what happened. But what we can change is your tomorrow. So make a choice today. Make a choice because I can't stop you from ending up into that casket. But what I can do is help from wherever your soul goes after you end up there. So men and women, make that choice today. Start to become this version of Hannah. See, she exalted the Lord. When she got the blessing from God, she didn't just keep going on like it was nothing. No, she said, I give praises to you. You're a good, good father. I love that song, the worship team. They, they sung that. You're a good, good father. She just exalted it. I mean, she went almost a whole chapter in the Bible giving praises to God. There was a spirit of David that woke up into this mother because she was given a child. Imagine if someone had told Hannah, you need to abort your baby. What she would have done, she probably would have hit him upside the head with something. <laughs> Are you crazy? I went years praying for this child. I went years fighting in the temple, war room in the temple for this child. I ain't giving up this blessing. Amen. If you're listening to this, I know it's being recorded. 
and you're asking yourself whether you should give up a child or not, I want you to understand something. What is in your womb is a blessing from God. Amen. I love how Sue said it to me. That the act of how it was created may not have been a blessing. That might have been sin, but that child is not a sin. That's a blessing. And we don't got no right to kill what God has made. So mothers, I'm going to say this to you as I close. I understand there's hard times in motherhood. That I, I can't say I understand because I don't. I don't understand what a mother goes through, but I will say I appreciate it. I appreciate the struggle. I appreciate the hard times you guys go through. And I want you to understand there is light at the end of the tunnel. You keep going into that war room. You keep praying for this younger generation because I, the youth pastor, am seeing a change. We Even in this church, we're seeing young people come into this place and get changed. And I'm telling you, it ain't happening just because of me. It's not happening just because of my wife. It's happening because we got mothers and fathers in this church that are warring that are doing war on our behalf, and I'm feeling it. Just like I told my mom, I'm feeling the prayer. So you keep doing it. You keep speaking it into existence. You keep calling them out by name. Call your kids out by name while you're praying them. shita. Call them out by name. God, you saved Jimmy. God, you saved Naomi. Get them on the right path. God, you block every, put a hedge of protection over. See, that's how my mom used to pray. God, your glory shine upon them, Lord. Speak it over them what the Bible has called you to. And in the end, you will win. Amen. See, Hannah won, didn't she? Mm -hmm. Hannah won. She might not have been a millionaire. She might not have had all the fancy cars and the houses. The Bible don't say she did. But boy, inside of her soul, she was a millionaire. Let me tell you something. Amen. She was a millionaire inside of her soul. And you've seen it in the verses. She started exalting God in chapter 2, giving him praise for what God has done. So mothers, I want you to do something for me. When you get home today, start to give God praise. And husbands, start to praise God with your wife. It may make your kids uncomfortable. They may not like it. But let me tell you something. One day they're going to say, thank you, mom. Amen. <laughs> Just like I say thank you. Because if it wasn't for mom doing that, I might not be here today. Amen. I might not be here today. I might have been that 15-year-old that was in the casket. And everyone was crying and... And they want the pastor to say something. What am I supposed to say? He's gone. He's gone. There wasn't anything to say about him. But let me tell you something. You got a chance right now. We're going to pray for the mothers. But in, in closing, I want to say this. In the end, you will win. Godly mothers, prayer warriors, the backbone of our church, you will win. So I pray a Hana will birth up in each mother that's here right now. You may be discouraged. You may be asking God, God, I don't know what's going on with my kids. You may be second guessing yourself sometimes. Maybe it's your relationship with God. Maybe it's this. Maybe it's that. My mom went through those things. Maybe it's the way that I, maybe I'm not serving God well enough. Maybe I'm not doing that. Stop that. Stop that. Remember who you are. Amen. Remember whose you are. Mm -hmm. You're a woman of God. Right. You're a woman of God. Don't the Bible say virtuous woman? Ain't that what it say? Hallelujah. A woman of honor. See, to be called a godly mother is the highest honor a woman could have. That's the highest honor. Your kids don't give you that honor. God does. I can't give my mom that honor. God gives it to her. And one day when you're in heaven, God's going to look at you and say, Mother, well done. Well done. I saw those nights that you were sleepless playing about your child, not knowing how it was going to work out. Well done. I saw those nights where you were crying out, crying and it seemed like for no reason. Well done. 
I saw those nights where you were depressed and down and just couldn't pick yourself up. Well done. I saw all that. You may not have thought your husband, your husband may not have seen it. Let me tell you something. It's times I don't see it. I just want to be honest with you. It's times I don't see it. It's times I don't see. I'm not like Ekakaya who saw all the things Hana was going through. Man, he knew when she was hurting before she could even say it. He knew he could tell. So the Bible said he'd give her a double portion. She wouldn't ask for it because he could tell she was hurting. They felt each other. But it's times I can't feel the pain my wife is going through. Maybe I'm disconnected or something. But God knows. And God sends someone to provide. God sends someone to speak into her life. Because he says, just like he said when I was younger, David, if you ain't going to do it, I'm going to send somebody to encourage her. If you're not going to do it, I'm going to send somebody to encourage her. So today as we... In let me just have all our mothers stand up. Thank you. Give God a praise. Give God a praise. Look at this. Mothers, I want to just say thank you for your godly strength. Thank you for what you do. And I know some of you are our prayer warriors. Get in that war room, man. Get in that war room and you keep fighting. And I'm going to fight with you in mine. I want you to know why you praying, me and my wife are praying too. Why you fighting, me and my wife are fighting too. And I don't know what tomorrow brings. I know what Revelation says. But I'm not going to sit idly by and watch a whole generation just go off to hell. No. No, with every breath that God gives me, we got to fight. We got to have that fighting mentality that Hannah had. And we may have times of brokenness. We may have times of where we don't understand what's going on. I don't need the mic right now. <laughs> we may have times like that. But I want you to understand it's time to go to the temple. It's time to get in the face of the priest, the high priest, Jesus Christ. Amen. Broken it all. Everything on the line. Saying, God, I ain't got no more answers. I done tried it all. I done tried it all with my husband. I done tried it all with my aunts and uncles and maybe my own mom and dad. I done tried it all with my children. So I'm going to bring them to you. So you know what Hannah did? She brought Penina, the other wife, to God. She brought her husband to God. She didn't wait for Ekakaya to come to the temple with her. No, she brought it to God herself. She went to the temple by herself. And man, if you got to go in that war room by yourself, you do it. You go in that war room broken and on, I promise you, you're going to come out with a praise. You're going to come out of that war room with a praise. You're going to feel the Holy Spirit come upon you. Like in the days of, uh, of Ezekiel. Like in the days of Daniel, like in the days of King David, like in the days of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You're going to feel the Holy Spirit come upon you. And God's going to encourage you. He's going to say, Mother, you keep fighting. And I'm going to give you my spirit. And you're going to see your kids saved one day. You're going to see them turn to you and say, thank you, Mom. Maybe it's when you're older. Maybe it's when you're that mom that... They got to carry up to the mountaintop. Maybe they got to carry you to church. Maybe they got to bring you to the church. But one day, you're going to hear it. You're going to hear it. The Bible says, raise a child in the way that they are supposed to be raised. And they will not depart from that way. I'm paraphrasing. Amen. 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 Let me have all the mothers come up. I'm going to say a prayer for all of you. As we close today. Give God a praise. Look at this. All of our mothers here. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Mother.
brothers, let's all bow our heads. I'm going to get to each of you, okay? Thank you, God. And can I have the men, the fathers, come up and, and, and just put your hand on your wife or your mother, if you will, as we pray. Some of our godly men, come on up here. We want the spirit to move today, amen? We want the spirit to move. I just want to share, when I was preparing this message, God showed me something. That we got some mothers that's going through some stuff in our church. And we're a family. We're brothers and sisters. I'm your brother, you're my sister, you're my brother, amen? And I love you. So if you're going through something, I'm going through something. We got to look at it like that, amen? Jesus. Father, I just pray for my sister right now. Holy Spirit, come upon her. God, I pray that you will birth a Hana in her, God. Father God, she said she, she aborted one one day, God. And God, she's repentant, God. Blessed is a repentant heart, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, I pray that you would loose this burden that's been on her for years, God. Come upon her right now, Holy Spirit. Deliver her from this burden, God. And let her stand up as a strong mother of faith. In Jesus' name, from this day forth, I want you to understand something. Your heart, not this prayer, has delivered you. Your heart has delivered you today. It's that repentant heart. You've been delivered in Jesus' name. I pray against every attack of the enemy, every assignment of the enemy to try and disprove this prayer, to try and disprove the power of the Holy Ghost right now. Break in the name of Jesus. Loose it. I pray over her children. No weapon formed against them will prosper right now. We cancel every weapon, everything that has been formed by the enemy on your children. I know you've been going through a lot with them. I can feel it. I loose it right now. Rest in the name of Jesus. Rest in the name of Jesus, mother. Rest in the name of Jesus, mother. You let it go and you let God. Take them children to God. Don't you try and handle it yourself. Without God, you're no one. But boy, with God, you're a strong woman. Give it to God. Jesus. Anoint you. Father God, hallelujah. Thank you, God. Jesus. God, bring her family back together right now. I see a broken family, God, that needs to be healed. Mighty woman of God. Mighty woman of faith. It's time to stand up. Stand up now. It's time to war. What are you waiting for? God is saying, what are you waiting for? It's time to fight. Amen. Jesus, Jesus, I don't care what you have done in your past. You're with God now. It's been forgiven. Stop holding it against yourself. Mm. I break that spirit of remembering this stuff. That spirit of remembering all you have gone through in your life. God said, I took it and I threw it in the sea of forgetfulness. I want you to. Amen. It's a message God been waiting to give you. Yes. yes. You've been needing to hear this. Fire of the Holy Ghost right now fall upon this woman. Amen. It's time to stand Thank you, up. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You've been called you, to the work of Jesus Christ. You're not just here by chance. Yes. It's time to work. Yes. It's time to work. Yes. You got a prayer. It's a prayer warrior inside of you. Start to use that gift. Yes. Thank Start you, to Jesus. use that gift. Yes. Start to give God praise. Yes. Boy, when it's praising time, I want you to stand up like Hannah and exalt the Lord. Yes. Exalt the Lord on high. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Your past is keeping you down. It's been forgotten. Thank you. Jesus. Let it go. Thank you, Jesus. Let it go. Yes. I speak that into yes. your life right now. You've been forgiven. You've been forgiven. Lift your hands. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, fill her heart right now, God. There's some things going on in this body, but the root issue is the heart. In Jesus' name, heal it. Yes. Right 
every hurtful word, no matter the word, be healed in the name of Jesus. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember the first time I seen you, I could feel the fire that God had placed inside of me. Amen. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Yes. Mm -hmm. God, I rebuke every hand of the enemy right now that has come against their household, God. Yes. I rebuke the hand that's come against the weapon that's trying to form, been trying to form for months now, God. <coughs> God, I pray for this praying woman. There's been a lot of prayers that we ain't seen. We ain't heard that you prayer, but God has heard it. Yes. You got the confirmation today. Yes. God you. heard. Thank you. And God is working. Yes. You think those kids, they may think they're living, they're living their own life. They're not. They're in God's hand. God sees it. Amen. God, I pray for the kids and the grandkids, God. Amen. Yes. God, I pray that her faith would expound to them, God. You said to David that your whole bloodline would be blessed. But God, what we keep missing is you blessed it before David, God. You were yes. blessing David before he was on earth, God. And God, I pray that you will bless this bloodline right here, God. Yes. That this will be a union unbreakable, God. This yes. will be a union unbreakable. To the weapons of Satan, God. I rebuke yes. and plead the name of Jesus over anybody in this family right now that has come against this marriage. It's been some weapons formed. They're being dropped right now. They're being dropped in the name of Jesus. Your kids have been going through stuff. Mm. I pray against financial issues. For those children, break in the name of Jesus. Yes. Break it. Thank you. Those grandkids will be provided for. Everything. In Jesus' name. Yes. God, I pray. Mm. I don't know, God, but there's been something that's come against my brother, even in the workplace, God. Some people that are there and not for him, God, break it right now in Amen. the mighty name of Thank Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. It's a child of God right here. Yes. And brother, I know you've been through a lot, physically and mentally in your life. Yes. But God brought you here for a reason. Amen. Strong man of God. Hallelujah. I speak that into his life right now. And eye has not seen nor ear has heard what God's about to do in your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Eye has not seen nor ear has heard, mother, what God is about to do. He ain't done. Amen. He ain't done. I know that. God ain't done. God's about to do some mighty things in your life. You keep on warring. You yes. keep on warring in Jesus' name. Yes. I break every affliction of the body that has held her right now. Yes. Break it right now. Total healing in this body. Yes. Holy Spirit flow through right now in Jesus', yes, Jesus. name. Amen. Just give me praise. Amen. 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 Thank you, God. Thank God you, God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. God is in Lord the God. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you. Yes. Come on, mother. Yes. Father God, I just Those pray right yeah, now. Yeah, I don't think my God bless you. I call out for her kids right now. In the heavenlies, God. Save them, Lord. Bring them on to you, God. Mm, Jesus, right now. Holy Jesus. Spirit, I just Thank feel you, you need a touch from the Spirit. God wants to do that. I want you to do me a favor. Keep your eyes closed. I want you to look up at Jesus. The Bible says when he was on that cross, he had nails in his hands and nails in his feet. Wounds all over his body. And when I got saved, the pastor told me he would have done it if you were the only one. So mother, be encouraged. Be encouraged. I speak healing into her right now, God. Yes. Heal her, Lord, right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. God, I call out right now every hand of Satan that's been placed on these kids. Yes. You keep praying for them. You keep going. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. 
Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God's going to do it. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Let me give her a Thank you, Father. Father God, I just thank you. Okay. That's your daughter? Amen, Mom. Well, thank you. <laughs> Amen. Well, bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, I just thank you. Lord Jesus, thank you for her, God. Faithful mom, faithful mother, faithful wife. Thank you, God. Mm. God, I just pray right now. These last few years has been rough. And God, I remember my grandmother saying, when you get to a place where it's hard to know what to pray, just pray in the spirit. Oh, When you don't know what to pray, let the spirit pray. God, those kids, her daughter, her son, Lord God, they are in your hands right now. Yes, thank you, Jesus. They might not be where you want them to be, but let me know. I'm letting you know, Mom. They're coming. They're coming. You keep that faith. You keep that prayer. I pray against every stronghold that's been placed on that household, God. Every lie that has been placed on those kids, whether it has been spoken in school by friends, God, we banish it right now in the name of yes. Jesus. Bring yes. to remembrance what this mother has prayed over her children, God. Yes. Yes. In that war room with her husband, God. Yes. Lord, in services, many services, God, even when they dedicated them, Lord. Bring it back, God, right now in Jesus' name. Yes. Thank Holy you. Spirit, thank move, you. God. God's going to bring him in. God's going to do it. And when he does it, you're going to look up and give glory. Yes. Give honor. Give praise. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Bless him in the name of Jesus. Let this bond be one. Lord God, that can't be broken. Every weapon be banished right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mommy and Grandma, thank you, Jesus. Father God, Lord, I thank you for her, God. Faithful, faithful, faithful are you. Faithful. I just, God just spoke that over me right now. Faithful. No matter what you go through, you keep coming. You keep fighting, and I see it. I see it. And Grandma, you, you're trying to be all of it for everybody. You're trying to be there for your kids. You, trying to be there for your grandkids. Let me tell you something. Today, you're going to give it up to God. You can't do it by yourself. You can't be everything to everybody, but God can. So right now, I want you to rest in Jesus' name. No more trying to be everything for everybody. I want you to start looking out for yourself. I want you to start looking out for your help. Start being concerned with that. In Jesus' name, today you're going to be touched by the Holy Ghost. Father God, heal this body right now. Heal her mind. Give her encouragement. Give her strength. She needs strength right now. Even today, God. Father God, right now I call strength into this body, God. No more weariness, God, but strength. And God, all these needs that her kids have and her grandkids, God, you start to meet them, God. Yes. We give them up to you right now, Lord. Yes. You handle it, God. You do it, God. Like only you can. And now, Mom, you rest. In the name of Jesus, do it. Rest. Give it up to God. No more worrying, no more doubting. You give it to God. God's going to do it. Yes. You remember that day when you had that child? And God promised I'd take care of him. Remember that. Yes. Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Thank you for our first thank you, God. Faithful prayer. God, there's a Hannah right here before us, and we thank you, God. There's a praying woman right here before us, God. There's a woman that cares about this youth, cares about this generation, God. And God, she's a mom to so many. Yes. Father God, right now I ask that you touch her, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Fill her, God, 
Thank you, Jesus. Lord God, touch her right now, God. I pray for her children, God, that you would touch them right now, wherever they are, God. Thank you, Jesus. Let your Holy Spirit come upon them, God, right now. We're calling them. It's time. No more running around. You come on in. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You said we're two or more agree. Yes. Mom, we, we're agreeing with you right now. Yes. Thank you. Jesus. It's going to happen. Yes. They don't got no choice but to come. They don't got no choice. Because God is calling. Yes. And when the king calls, you come. Yes. In Jesus' name, God, I pray over her. Yes. God, encourage her right now, Lord. Yes. I can feel the pain that she feels when she sees young people going through struggles. Yes. Thank she you, feels Jesus. pain when they don't have a mom and a dad in their life, God. I pray that you would encourage her as she encourages us, God. Encourage her right now. Thank you, Jesus. Speak against every hand of Satan that's trying to come against her household. Thank you, Jesus. You have no dominion. Get out. Amen. Get out. We rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Got some pizza. Nice looking food. Be Any more moms. Got some nice looking food. Thank you. Father God. <laughs> Same thing. Boy, this is a praying woman. This is a praying woman. You pray for years for your kids and you're still doing it. I see it. God's bringing it to pass, ain't he? He got them to church. He's bringing them in. I know it may not always look good, Mom, but God's doing it. God is doing it. Ooh, cast all your worries and burdens on him, for he cares for you. That's the word. God, I, mm, I call out all this pain. So sometimes as kids, we don't understand what pain we cause. It's a lot of pain this mom is going through. Oh, man. Oh, sha la 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 You've been going through even now. And I know you like to be there for your kids. Mom, you can't be everything for them. God wants you to know you can't do it all. You got to release all of this burden. Release it in Jesus' name. Release it. God, you take it right now. Those kids are God's children. We give them to you, God. Heal this woman right now of all this pain. She's been called names. She's been talked about. She's been put down. Ooh, Satan, you are a liar and a deceiver. How dare you touch the child of God? Get your hands up off her right now. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, and I call you to flee. It's done. It is done. I call those children right now under the dominion of Jesus Christ. They give their hearts to Christ. No more stress. No more worrying if you're doing a good job. You're doing a great job. You're doing a great job. God is with you. Don't you ever forget that. You came here weary and burdened. You're leaving here strong. You're leaving here strong. You're leaving strong. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, Mom, for everything that you're doing. Thank you, Mom, for everything. You may not hear this a lot, but I'm saying thank you, Mom. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, Mom. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for not giving up, Mom. Thank you, Mom. Love There's so much love. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Mom, you've been going through a lot. I see it. 
God sees it. And you got some brothers and sisters right here. And they care for you and they love you. And we're not about to see you leave here weeping. We're not going to see you leave here broken. Father God, come upon her right now, God. God, she wants to see her kids well and serving you, God. And it ain't been looking like it's supposed to be looking, God. But God, you are in control. You are, in, God is in control. Woman of God. Man, Satan's been attacking our minds. I didn't see it. I rebuke you. I rebuke you. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Yes. Get your hand off this woman. Yes. Get your hand off her kids. Yes. Get your hand off her family. Yes. Get your hand off right now. I plead the blood of Jesus over her. Holy Spirit fall right now on her right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Breathe on her, Jesus. Your child is here and she's broken. She just needs your touch. She just needs your touch. Oh, we banish every attack from the enemy right now. People have called you names. They've said things about you. They've judged you. They judged the way that you've been raising your kids. Let me tell you something. God is in control. Yes, Jesus. God is in control. It may look like the family's falling apart. Let me tell you, God is in control. And he's in it right now. Yes, Jesus. No more weeping. No more hurting. God's going to do it. Let me see your hands, Jesus. Father, I anoint these hands, whatever they touch. God. When you go home, touch that home. Hug those children. They may not know what you're doing. You're imparting the Holy Ghost on them right now in Jesus' name. Hug those kids. See if it don't change. Touch those walls. See if it don't change. Touch your family. See if it don't change, sister. In Jesus' name. See if it don't change. Only by the Holy Ghost. God's going to do it. You're going to come here with a testimony. In Jesus' name. You're going to come here with a testimony. Thank you, God. I just feel a spirit of love. Thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, in the sight of my brothers and sisters, I repent. I repent for not knowing when she's always hurt, God. I repent, God, for not knowing all the time she's been tired and I missed it, God. God, I repent, Lord, for not being there as a help all the time. For putting other things above her needs, God. I repent for that, Lord. In Jesus' name. God, I pray for her right now. God, strengthen her, Lord. Give her strength right now, even now, God, to fight the good fight, Lord. Even as she goes through at work, Lord God, she knows what she wants to see, God. But the devil's attacking at all fronts. I banish you in the mighty name of Jesus. I rebuke you. Get your hand up off that daycare. You can't have those kids. Those are God's kids. Those are God's children. I don't care what the what the parents are doing. Those children belong to God. Get your hand up off them, Satan. Those are precious children in God's eyes. Get your hands up off them. I plead the blood of Jesus over that daycare. I speak against all of this that's going on. I won't stand idly by. No. Raise up a standard even now. They think they can do things their own way. God, I pray your hand of judgment come upon that place. Until they fall under 
the surrenderance of Jesus Christ. No more worry and stress in there. I want you to understand, woman of God, God is there. He's going to take care of you. God is going to be with you. God is going to help you raise that daughter. God, we surrender our will to yours, God. Let your way be done, not ours, God. In your, our marriage, in our house, in our daughter, God. Oh, Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. It is done. I just pray over everybody here, and I pray over the food. I've kept us from eating. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> God, I just ask your blessing be over this food. Your blessing be over each person that's here, God. Your blessing be over our moms. In Jesus' precious name, if there's anyone here that wants to give their life to Christ, I'll be staying up here. You need a touch. You didn't get prayed for. I'll be up here. But you're released now. Go in Jesus. Go in God and be blessed. Amen. 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 God bless you.